Welcome to the Cashflow Ninja, the podcast sharing how to create and grow income streams and manage, multiply, and protect your wealth in the new economy. Are you tired of trading your time for money? Do you desire freedom today instead of retirement in 10, 20, or 30 years? I'm MC Lobsher, and this is the Cashflow Ninja. Hello, Cashflow Ninjas. MC Lobsher here, and welcome to another episode of the Cashflow Ninja. I have a great show for you today. In today's show, we're going to look at the seven step blueprint to extraordinary real estate success. My guest in this episode is Trevor McGregor. Trevor is a high performance master coach with over 20,000 one to one coaching sessions under his belt. He has worked with clients from around the world, including Fortune 500 executives, high-level real estate investors, entrepreneurs, world-class athletes, and business professionals, and they all come to him for one reason, life-changing transformation. In addition to running his own private coaching practice, Trevor was a master platinum coach with the Tony Robbins Group, offering elite coaching unlike any other program in the world. Trevor is also an active real estate investor, holding assets in his portfolio that range from many different asset classes in Canada, the United States, Costa Rica, and even as far away as Australia. Trevor's passion is coaching real estate investors, uh, and today Trevor's clients have bought over $1 billion with a B dollars worth of multifamily apartments in the past few years alone. If you have not checked out my new podcast, Cashflow Investing Secrets, you totally should. I highly recommend it. It's a shorter show, 10 minutes or less, where I share one concept and or idea at a time. What I've learned from interviewing over 500 Cashflow Ninjas, you can listen to the show on your favorite podcast, video, and live streaming platforms. We also have an investment group and community for accredited investors. If you're interested to join the group, please visit CashflowNinjaInvestorsNetwork.com. And you can also connect with other Cashflow Ninjas uh, and our community through our Facebook group. All you have to do is go to Facebook and type in Cashflow Ninja Community and you'll find the group. Savvy investors know that in order for the miracle of compounding interest to work, it's magic, you have to be constantly invested in all stages of the economic cycle. So the question then becomes, how do you find solid investments when the stock market is close to all-time highs and everything else just seems so inflated? That's where our friends at ASIM Capital come in. Since 2011, ASIM has helped more than 300 accredited investors allocate more than $25 million to mobile home parks, self-storage, and workforce housing due to their ability to perform well during economic recessions. If you're interested in learning more, head on over to asymcapital.com. That's A-S-Y-M capital.com to get instant access to their investment offerings. MC Lobsher, the creator of the Cashflow Ninja and Cashflow Coach at Producers Wealth, where we help our clients integrate infinite banking with their business and investments. To learn how you can create your own banking system to turbocharge your investments and business in 30 days or less, go to yourownbankingsystem.com. That's yourownbankingsystem.com. Trevor, welcome to the show. Well, thank you for having me on, MC. Great to be here with you. Yeah, really appreciate you coming on and appreciate you spending some time with us. Trevor, can you please share a little bit about your background and journey with my listeners? Well, absolutely. Thank you. Yes, my name is Trevor McGregor, and I live up in Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. Live here with my beautiful wife, Lisa, and my three sons. And really, MC, my background is business and real estate. So I started out in corporate many years ago and literally you know, worked my way up the corporate ladder also got into buying some real estate. And really, it was um, my business background and doing a whole bunch of stuff in real estate that got me interested in helping other people. And, and that's when I literally became, you know, a coach. And I'm proud to say that, you know, I became a coach for Anthony Robbins. Everybody loves Tony and uh, went on to work with Tony as one of his top coaches on the planet for five full years and then ventured out on my own. And here I am helping people in business and real estate all over this beautiful blue planet. What was it like working and traveling with Tony all around the world for five years? I mean, his energy is just unbelievable. Every time I, I just watch a video of Tony and I get pretty, pretty hyped up, right? I, I, get, I get all energized. 
Yeah, well, Tony, we say he's a force of nature. And uh, ultimately, I was blessed and grateful to travel from event to event. And it was pretty grueling. I mean, Tony's on the road over 300 days a year. I didn't go with him everywhere. But, you know, at different events like Business Mastery, Date with Destiny, Unleash the Power Within, Life and Wealth Mastery. So it was an amazing opportunity to not only see, you know, behind the curtain, but really see Tony do a lot of transformation both in business and in life with literally, you know, millions of people. Yeah. Yeah. That's quite incredible. What is, so if you don't mind giving us an insight, because obviously a lot of folks have experienced the events from the one side, what, what's, what's happening behind the curtain? What does it look like from the other side? Cause obviously you guys are impacting so many people and changing lives, but if you don't mind sharing a little bit on that side of it too. Well, absolutely. And I guess, you know, as I help you and your listeners understand what happens behind the curtain is, you know, people have habits, you know, and people are literally stuck in those habits. And what I do as a master platinum coach or what Tony does, and again, I'm speaking from his experience. I'm also speaking from my experience, MC, of having done over 20,000 coaching calls myself. That's an actual statistic. (laughs) <laughs> we see where people tend to fail and we see where ten, people tend to be wildly successful. So it's literally boils down to us really understanding what is their state, what is their story, and what is their strategy. And the state is about, you know, what are they focused on and what are they feeling and what are they saying? The story is their identity. You know, are they a victim to circumstance or are they ready to become a victor? And then the strategy is literally doing the right things in the right order at the right times for the right reasons. And when people align with their state, their story and their strategy, you know, someone like Tony or I can really move them from where they are to where they want to be. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. And you've, you've mentioned habits and that's a a big differentiator there. Um, I mean, it it just so, so, and those are things that we can control on a daily basis, right? Well, it really is. And I think it's kind of funny that we as human beings have over 60,000 thoughts a day and that 98% of those same thoughts we had today are the same thoughts we had yesterday and the day before. And so, you know, we do a lot of work to really remind people that when you make decisions, you're making them habitually. You know, you're making them from a memory of the past instead of what we like to do is creating a vision of the future. And I'll say that again, because it's profound that most people, in life or in business or making decisions based on, you know, how they've been thinking and behaving prior to today, because it's habitual. Well, we invite you to get out of your head and back into your heart and your gut to make decisions based on, you know, the proper state story and strategy that is created from having a vision of the future. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. That's just, uh, you know, thoughts becomes actions, actions becomes habits, right? You got that right. And again, we've got some positive habits and we've got negative habits, but awareness is what I find is the key. When you become aware of how you're showing up, you can ask yourself, is this helping me or is this hindering me? And from there, you know, change is the obvious thing that you can make to move in the direction you want to go. So state is a big thing. And that's something that I've tried, I've, I've learned, and I've tried to focus on to control how I feel and, and, and so forth. What are some of the things that folks can do to get them in a certain state to be a high performer and to constantly perform at a, at a high level when they're performing? Oh, that's a great question. And again, whether you're, you know, someone in business or someone in life, or I coach a lot of Olympic athletes, I coach a lot of Fortune 500 executives, I coach a lot of professional sports heroes, And we always talk about, you know, your state management being three things. The first of which is your physiology. I mean, that's why Tony's famous for saying physiology first. So if you're making a decision when your head's down or your shoulders are down or you're breathing shallow or you're slumped over your desk, you're not going to make a very good decision. So we always say change your physiology, get up, move, hydrate, put on some really good music. You know, and music is the ultimate state inducer. And once you change the way that you're feeling in your body, trust me, you change what's going on in your mind. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. So, and and I can resonate with the, with the music too. I mean, that's why people like to work out listening to certain music because it gets them in a certain state to push themselves. That's exactly right. 
a certain song or a certain band or a certain rhythm is an absolute opportunity to really get up and, and really change the way your cells are vibrating in your body. And that takes us to number two, which is your focus. I mean, there's that old saying that where focus goes, energy flows. And it's true. Yeah. And unfortunately, most people are focused on what they don't want instead of what they do want. Does that land with you? Yeah, absolutely. I, I could definitely see that. Yeah, we talk about the big three in America right now being, you know, I don't want to be broke. I don't want to be fat. And I don't want to be lonely. So we talk about money. We talk about relationships and health. Instead of saying those things, you got to focus on what you do want. So if we started to say, you know, I want to be abundant. I want to be in great shape. And I want to find somebody to, you know, enjoy my time with. I'm telling you, the brain will then go out and look for things that literally are part of what you're focused on. And that's what I think a lot of people need to remind themselves is to really, you know, have a little bit of sensory acuity and be aware of what's coming out of their mouth or what they're thinking. Because again, where that focus go, that energy will flow. Yeah, absolutely. And what is the, the third one? The third one MC is really our language and what it means. I mean, we will either say something internally or we will say something out loud that is going to produce emotion and our emotion is going to drive our behavior. You know, if you say things like, well, I ought to go, you know, do some due diligence on something or, well, I really should go to the gym and work out. Those are weak forms of commitment. When you say I'm committed or I'm defiantly committed, I'm coachable, I'm resourceful. I'm energetic, I'm playful, I'm passionate. You know, you will find a way to literally take those words, turn them into emotion, and that emotion is get you fired up to go out there and do what it is you want to go do. So again, we go back to your physiology, your focus, your language, the emotion and the meaning that it gives you could radically change somebody's state. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, absolutely. And I, I love this stuff too because it's just – you know, it, it, it's it's transformational. Just the 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 knowledge of this, because sometimes you know you get off track and you become you 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 follow a path of where you're not intentional anymore. And to be aware of all these things allows you to be intentional every you know with your time. That's it. And again, I go back to it is awareness. And when you start checking in with yourself to say, well, what is is my current physiology on a scale of say one to ten? Or what is my current focus on what I want on a scale of one to 10? And what's coming out of my mouth or what's my dominant emotion? I mean, you know, MC, when some people just live in a negative emotional home, I mean, you probably met those people that are always angry, you know, yeah. or you met those people that are always frustrated all the time, or, you know, you get somebody that's sad all the time. Well, we call that their dominant emotional home. And they don't have to live in those homes. They can literally put a for sale sign on it and live in a better home. Again, like being, you know, someone who's committed or courageous or determined or playful. I mean, pick a home that you want to have as your home address and literally own where you live. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, let's switch uh, gears here a little bit and jump into the real estate. Uh, very, uh, you're, uh, have had a, fantastic career in real estate. And one of the things that folks look look at and real estate investors look at, they look at successful folks and they kind of know how they started. And maybe they're at that same kind of level starting off, starting to grow a little bit slowly, but surely, but they're having trouble really ramping it up and now scaling that real estate business. Uh, any comments on that? Well, I got many comments on that because that is a, literally what I do. I help a lot of owners literally, you know, go from where they are to where they want to be with what I call the seven simple steps to extraordinary real estate success or the seven simple steps to extraordinary business success. And it's applicable across the board. But before I go into the seven steps, MC, I really remind people that there's only two things that they need to be successful. And the first one we've already talked about, and that is to have a high performance mindset because again, mindset is everything in my world. And then the second word also starts with the letter M. And that is when you go out there and you model best practices. Right. So let's recap. If you have the right mindset and you go out there and model, you know, what other people have done, you know, to go from where you are to where you want to be, 
That's the one-two punch that allows people to turn decades into days. I mean, imagine if you and your listeners could turn decades into days by owning your mindset and modeling best practices. Just think of how far you could go, how fast. Does that resonate with you? Absolutely. And I've used that quote of Tony quite a bit of success leaves clues. There's a blueprint because as a former uh, uh, competitive athlete, that was exactly what I did. I always tried just to model the best players out there and try to just learn everything that I could possibly do from them. And when it came uh, to wealth and money and business, I try to do exactly the same thing. And you know, that's, that's why I have a podcast too. <laughs> that's right. It's a very successful podcast with literally some unbelievable guests. And that's why I'm so blessed and grateful to be on your show. But if you think about anything, I mean, even if you go back to tribal times where we sat around the campfire, we literally told stories and learned from other people, other elders. And that was passed on to generation, to generation, to generation. And you know what? It's still the same thing today. You know, so really you got to ask yourself, are you going to be that guy that goes out there and tries to figure it all out on your own, or are you going to adopt a high performance mindset and find a mentor, a coach, a trainer, listening to great guests like you and and the people you get on your show so that you can go further faster? Because I'm telling you, that's the fastest path to success. Would you agree? Absolutely. And I love the, the concept of a decade and a day because you can literally, with if you if you spend time with someone, like if doing what you want to do and have the ability to spend it, basically a day with that person, you can download you know, not just only a decade, but decades of knowledge uh, from that person to really, really speed up your process and, and, and your, your success curve. Well, it really is. I mean, that for sure, finding the right people, but also listening to podcasts like this one, reading great books, going to seminars. I mean, even, you know, listening or watching biographies. I mean, you watch what Elon Musk has done or Richard Branson or Oprah Winfrey or Steve Jobs. I mean, there's so much information there that can help you move from where you are to where you want to be. So a combination of all of that is what I suggest to my clients. And it's something that I pride myself on doing because It's not just getting the knowledge, MC. It's the application of the knowledge. I mean, if it were just the knowledge alone, every librarian in the United States would be a gazillionaire, and they're not, (laughs) right? It's the the application of this information, and that's what I get excited about. Yeah, that's so, so true. So what are some of the, the, the seven steps to extraordinary success in real estate and business? You bet. Well, thank you. And the first one is my favorite one. And I wouldn't be a master platinum coach without, you know, leading with this. But number one is to condition your mindset daily. And note the word daily. I mean, most people get up, you know, their feet hit the floor, they rush through the shower, they grab a cup of coffee, they get the kids to work, they sit it down on their desk and they start their day. You know, I'm up at 444 every morning like clockwork. And the first thing I'm doing for 30 minutes is conditioning my mind. I might do a little meditation. I might do a little bit of reading. I might watch some inspirational YouTube clips. I might read a chapter of a book, but I'm telling you the best investment you can make in yourself is first thing in the morning as you condition your mindset daily. Would you agree? Yeah, a- absolutely. I mean, that's 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 how, how you start the day, right? <laughs> that is, and that's the best way to start the day. And you might want to follow that up with a little bit of physical conditioning, you know? You could go to the gym, you could do some squats, you could do some, you know, free weights, you could do whatever you want. But I have a big belief that those who condition their mind and their body first thing in the morning have what I call the competitive edge in business all day long. Wow. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's been a game changer because, you know, um, I remember at times when I didn't have that routine and when I have now, and it's, it's just, it's a complete game changer. The energy that you have, the ideas that you get, the creativity, it just, it's two different worlds, really. (laughs) Well, I love what you say there because it does reduce brain fog. You know, it stimulates creativity. And again, we're talking about you having the competitive edge every single day versus not doing it. And also what I like to bring up here is the compound effect. Imagine if you did it day one, day two, day five, day seven, day 12. You know, once an object gets into momentum, it tends to stay there. And you just start having these bursts of creativity or these bursts of energy 
or these bursts of, you know, wanting to go do things that the people that don't do this don't ever have to ever experience. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, it absolutely does. That's it. And that takes us to number two, which is, you know, knowing your outcome and creating a strategic plan of action. Because again, we can get rid of limiting beliefs, but if you don't know what you want or better yet, why you want it, you're never going to figure out how to reverse engineer getting there, you know? So what I do is after I condition my mind, I get crystal clear on, well, what are my outcomes for the day? What are my outcomes for the week? What are my outcomes for the month? And literally break things down into short-term and long-term goals. Because I believe that short-term goals, MC, are anything that are less than one year, anything that are long-term are two to five years, And then anything beyond that is what I call your vision for life and business. So I'm always aware of you really, what are my short-term, long-term and vision goals? And then once I have those down on paper, I can start reverse engineering. Well, what do I need to do today or this week or this month to move in that direction? Does that make sense? Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. If you, if you don't tell the, if you don't know what you want (laughs) and then share what you want, tell the universe what you want through your thoughts, uh, you know, no, you're not, you're not going to get anywhere. The, the universe will respond. That's it. And the universe responds better if you're specific. I mean, specificity yep. is power. Yep. So when you know exactly what you want and why you want it, and you've got that committed to paper and you literally obsess about it, I truly believe that the universe is your co-creator in helping you get there. Do you agree? Yep. Very, very powerful. Yep. You bet. And the There's a few other things that go along with that, like creating your action plan, you know, time stamping things, getting leverage and, you know, other people to support those outcomes. I mean, those come further down in the seven steps, but man, I'm telling you for the committed and for people that do this work, I find that they're able to move faster to their dreams than people that don't. Yeah, no, absolutely. You bet. And that takes us to number three which is what I call building solid operational systems, building solid operational systems, because here's the truth. You know, if you're going to go out there and take massive action towards what it is you want, you're going to need to have systems that support you along the way. That might be a team member. That might be multiple team members. That might be technology. You know, that might be, you know, financial or legal analysis. That might be marketing or sales. I mean, You need to have solid operational systems that allow you to execute day in, day out that help you get closer to where you want to be. Does that resonate? Yeah. I love my systems and processes because they provide, um, you know, they, 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 they tell you if something's wrong, right? They, they're supposed to provide predictable results if you do certain things and you do them consistently. So if you're not getting the results, then you can reverse engineer it and fix it and make adjustments along the way as well. Well, I love it. And I got to give you credit, my man, because I'm telling you, your podcast and even preparing for it has probably some of the best systems for support to make sure that your guests show up and deliver for your listeners. So huge props to you. And gosh, I liken it to baking a chocolate cake. I mean, if you've got the sugar and the eggs and the flour and the butter and you whip it all together, but you forgot to preheat the oven you're not going to get the cake you want, are you? So and I'm telling you, solid <laughs> operational systems and recipes and roadmaps and blueprints can be your best friend. What do you think? Yeah, absolutely. I, I love it. And I mean, that's, that's, that's one of the things that I, I, I find it fascinating too, because, um, and that's one of the stuff that I enjoy is putting the, building these out and, and putting them together. So I complete, I agree. Absolutely. And that takes us to number four, which is, you must build incredibly strong networks and teams. I mean, the world has sped up so fast. We've got so much coming at us all the time that, you know, you can't do it alone. You're going to need people on your team. You're going to need people outside of your team. You're going to need to leverage people with certain talents, certain gifts. And I often say to people either in business or real estate, you know, I'll ask them, what business are you really in? And they'll say, well, I'm in real estate or I'm in business. And I go, no, you're not. You're in the relationship business because, again, this is literally the world we live in today and that, you know, business is built on a foundation of relationships. Would you agree? Yeah, 
your relationship cap and we, I like it how you started with your mental capital too, and then combining that with your relationship capital. Your networks are just it's just so incredibly powerful, and that's that's the real that, that's the real capital, right? Well, it really is. And again, you know, when you think about how many people you have in your cell phone right now, the average person in America has anywhere from 75 to 150 people in their cell phone. For guys that probably play at a little bit of a higher level, they've got anywhere from, you know, 300 to 500 or even more in there. So you got to think that if the 80-20 rule applies to everything, that you've probably got 20% of the people, you know, in your network right now that could radically support your outcomes if you choose to reach out and, you know, build those relationships. Does that make sense? Yep, absolutely does. You bet. And then MC, we go to number five. And I got to tell you, this is my favorite thing to coach on. And it's called mastering time management. Yes, mastering (laughs) time management. Because here's the truth. After doing 20,000 coaching calls with men and women all over this beautiful blue planet, if there's one thing I see most people struggle with universally, it's how they spend their time. You know, and again, there's something called the rule of 168. And that rule decrees that it means that we all have 168 hours in a week. I mean, you and I have 168 hours. Elon Musk has 168 hours. Oprah Winfrey has 168 hours. You know, and we sleep for a bunch of those times. We eat, we, you know, play with the kids, we pay the bills. But what are you doing with the rest of your time? You know, and are you working on things that are, you know, important? Or are you working on things that are less important? You know, are you working on money-making activities or are you doing busy work? Because here's the truth, that in America alone, the average American in an eight-hour day is only productive two and a half to three hours a day. Wow. So you got to wonder what in the heck is going on with those other five hours and how are we losing that productivity? So, you know, helping people understand how to do the urgent and important activities is something that I'm very passionate about. Does that resonate with you? It absolutely does because if you if you can set up a, a a time management system and as you mentioned focus on income generating activities and work focus on activities within your unique ability uh, it's been a game changer for me just right there and all of a sudden I got less busy and a lot more productive. It's really true and I break it into three colors to make it even easier. I mean the first color is what I call brown time. That is where you're doing stuff like, you know, that doesn't really give you an ROI. Maybe you're watching television or maybe you're mindlessly surfing the net. You know, there's not a really strong ROI there. So let's go to the fun stuff, which is what I call green time. And yes, green like money. Now you're doing things that prepare you to make money. Or maybe you're out there making an offer on a property or maybe you're out there selling something in business because that's really where the rubber meets the road. But you can't just have brown time and green time in life without having what I call gold time. Yes, gold time is lifetime value. Where maybe you're listening to a really good podcast like this one. Maybe you're going to the gym to work out. Maybe you're spending time with your significant other or with your kids. Or maybe you're traveling somewhere on this beautiful planet. But if you get a real handle on, you know, what time are you spending in brown? What time are you spending in green? And what time are you spending in gold? It's a really simple reminder that we all are able to, you know, shift that around and make it what we want. You're listening to The Cashflow Ninja, the show helping people all over the world create monthly cash flow and achieve freedom today, not in 10, 20, 30, and or 40 years. This is a show where cash is not king, but cash flow is king. We will be right back after a word from our sponsors. Kings, queens, and royal families, along with the nobility and ultra-rich, have warehoused and stored their wealth for centuries in gold and silver, art, land, and real estate. These assets have stood the test of time through centuries and have been a great place to preserve and protect their wealth. Like gold, silver, land, and real estate, art has been around for centuries and will be around for many, many more centuries. That's why the ultra-rich will continue to invest in art and preserve their wealth in art. While the S&P declined 5.1% in 2018, the art market returned 10.6% and was called the best investment of 
2018 by the Wall Street Journal. Masterworks is the first company to allow investors to buy shares of great blue chip art masterpieces by artists like Picasso, Monet, and Warhol. You can get set up on their platform at cashflowninja.com forward slash art. My friend Dave Zook from The Real Asset Investor says you can be conventional or you can be wealthy. Pick one. The Real Asset Investor team creates value for investors looking for higher yield returns from ATM machines and sales storage investments. Their syndications offer attractive investment opportunities that produce strong cash flow, equity growth, huge tax incentives. They are truly passive and managed by a world-class team. To learn more about the exciting investment opportunities the Real Estate Investor offers, such as their ATM and sales storage syndications, please visit cashflowninja.com forward slash real asset investor. You're listening to The Cashflow Ninja, the show helping people all over the world create monthly cash flow and achieve freedom today, not in 10, 20, 30, and or 40 years. This is the show where cash is not king, but cash flow is king. Now let's return to our interview. What would you say is the, the goal of the time that you spend on certain activities during your, you know, what would be the, the goal and what would be a, a, a ideal uh, amount of time spent on each of the colors look like? Well, that's a really good question. And what I would say is that different people have different numbers or different percentages for those categories. You know, yeah. for some people, Unfortunately, I don't know if you know this, but the average American watches 36 hours of television a week. Oof. I mean, it's just absolutely not acceptable, you know? So I don't mind a little bit of brown time and a little bit of TV time, maybe the odd Netflix show on Friday night. But if you're stuck in front of the TV, you know, which I call the electronic income reducer, you know, that's on you <laughs> when you could be, you know, doing some green time, maybe researching how to start a home-based business maybe bringing, you know, a partner into a, a business that you need support with, maybe going out there and driving neighborhoods looking for great real estate deals or going to networking events or whatever. But man, I'm telling you, your green time is what makes this whole economy work. And then gold time I'm is literally, you know, reading great books, hiring coaches, you know, doing a little bit of meditation and anything that adds lifetime value to you. So if people really want to break that down into percentages, it's very fascinating to do it in two different ways. Number one is break down right now on a scale of 100%, how much time is spent in brown time, how much time in green time, and how much time in gold time, and then step into creating a vision of the future. How would you like to move those numbers around and maybe reduce your brown time to make more room for green or gold time? What do you think Think of that, MC? Yeah. No, that's fantastic stuff because uh, yeah, the the time management is a is a game changer. You know, as you mentioned, I like that the rule of one sixty eight as well, and you know, of, of the hours in the week. And I'm just still shocked. You had me at <laughs> thirty six <laughs> hours that, that people watch television. I'm like, oh my goodness. I know, so, and it's absolutely crazy. But that's the world we live in, and yep. uh, ultimately, it's up to guys like you and I to get them off the TV and. Yep. You know, in the gym, listening to great podcasts or going in and meeting with their local community or, you know, doing something with their family members. I mean, you know, I also think that people need something to look forward to. I mean, where is your next trip? When are you going? What do yep. you and your family have to look forward to? So I always say sitting down and planning out what you do is as important as knowing the numbers. But you know what? It all comes from either a memory of the past or a vision of the future and you get to create it the way you want with that, you know, pyramid of brown, green, and yellow or gold. Does that make sense? Yep. Absolutely. You got it. You got it. And number six kind of speaks to number five, two MC, because number six is really honoring your strengths and farming out your weaknesses. Because here's the truth. You know, some of us are good at certain things and some of us aren't good at certain things. I mean, real estate's a really good example of that. And I know you got a lot of real estate people listening to this great show. You know, some people like me love going out there and hunting for deals. Other people like sitting behind their computer and, you know, doing underwriting. And you've got other people that go out there and like raising capital. So the goal is to be able to do a little bit of everything, but to really then, you know, work with your strongest suit 
and have other people support you in areas where maybe it's not your zone of genius. And you hear this all the time. But my question is, is are you and the listeners literally practicing this? Does that make sense? Yep. Absolutely. You bet. And there's lots of different things. Maybe you need to hire a VA, you know, or a personal assistant. Maybe you need to really get, you know, a real handle on where you are spending your time to then create an idea of, well, you know, what are the low income, low activities, like maybe shopping or picking up your dry cleaning or doing the laundry. And yes, I know not everyone can afford to outsource some of that stuff, but well, what if you did? And that freed up your time to go out there and do money making activities or, you know, it's not always about making money, but literally creating an impact, you know, and making life better for other people. Because again, for the committed, there's always a way. Would you agree? Absolutely. And, and here's one thing that I would say, too, because I've looked into this quite a bit. And this is why this such, uh, you know, we live in such an amazing, incredible time because there's a lot of activities that people do not like to do. And guess what? There's entrepreneurs out there that know <laughs> that people don't like to do things yep. and certain things. And they say, no worries. I'll take it off your plate, you know? And, and so there's many different businesses and niches that you can outsource toss to. And it does it, you know, it, the, the, the cost, there's obviously cost price and value, but it's even and not that expensive even to do that in the big picture. Well, I love that you say that and kudos to you because I always ask my clients, I mean, what's an hour of your time really worth, yeah. you know, and when they answer it, they're usually low and I'll ask them, you know, is that really true or do you feel that maybe you're worth more? I mean, what's your real zone of genius? And as we really open up that conversation, MC, it's amazing to see that they're still doing, you know, 10 or $15 an hour activities when they could be using that time to produce, you know, you know, 200, 300, $500 worth of, you know, value in that time. And it doesn't mean for everything, but man, I'm telling you for people that don't get a real handle on this and don't get a real look at it, you know, they sometimes don't figure it out till they're in their forties or fifties or even sixties when maybe they could have started outsourcing things in their twenties or thirties. Does that make sense? Yeah. Do not guys and gals do not be the most expensive employee in your business. <laughs> Bingo. I love that. Isn't that the truth? No, I love how you say that. And that takes us to the final one. Number seven of the seven step blueprint to extraordinary success. And number seven won't surprise you. It's called taking massive action daily. Note the word daily again, because it's one thing to get rid of your limiting beliefs or condition your mind. It's another thing to create a plan of action, create systems, build networks, master your time management, and outsource things. But if you're not out there, you know, knocking on the door daily, taking care of business, you're fooling yourself. And note that the other thing that I will offer as a bonus distinction is that you've really got to assess whether you're on track or whether you need to course correct along the way. I mean, think of it like an airplane. When an airplane flies from Los Angeles to New York, it's literally off course every two to three seconds. But, you know, satellites in the sky keep it back on course. So, it lands in New York and doesn't land in Boston. So yeah. ultimately, that's the seventh of the seven simple steps. And if people would commit to taking that massive action daily, it's absolutely amazing to see what we can do as human beings. What do you think? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Taking ac action, you know, knowledge is power. Oh, no knowledge is knowledge, but applied knowledge, that's power. <laughs> that's it. You know, and there's lots of re great resources you know, books and podcasts that remind of us this of it all the time, you know, and really it starts with what my, you know, favorite thing is, is to really get a picture on the screen of your mind of what you want, you know, and then get rid of any limiting beliefs on why you can't have it. Because I'll tell you, the only thing preventing your listeners from going from where they are to where they want to be is the story that they tell themselves why they can't have it. And it's just not true. In fact, it's a bunch of BS. And BS in my world stands for your belief systems. And it's yeah. an opportunity to check in with your belief systems and see if you're running an old belief or maybe something that was passed on by one of your parents or maybe even your grandparents. I mean, they grew up at a totally different time and their experience is certainly doesn't have to be your experience. So that's why I say when you check in with these seven simple steps, you know, really ask yourself, you know, where are you strong? 
and where do you need to do some work? And I've even had some people that will literally, you know, scale themselves on a scale of one to 10. You know, where are you with conditioning your mind on a scale of one to 10? And how about your outcome focus and so and so and so. And out of 70 points, it's pretty easy to see, you know, how you're playing or not playing with these seven simple steps. Does that make sense? Yeah. It absolutely does. It absolutely does. Now, one habit I've observed from very wealthy and successful people is that they're always studying new things and and learning new things. What are you currently studying and learning? Oh, my gosh. Well, you got to ask me that on any given day. It could be a little bit different. But I've got my old go-tos that are literally my Bibles, like the book Think and Grow Rich. I mean, it's even sitting in front of me here on my desk. And I will literally flip that open. I've read it over 50, 60 times. I've literally listened to the audiobook in my SUV a thousand times. I mean, even my own three children, MC, can recite passages from Think and Grow Rich. So I always go back to one of my old, you know, standbys or I watch some old Tony Robbins stuff or read old Tony Robbins books. But right now I'm really into brain science. I'm really into, you know, Dr. Joe Dispenza. And in fact, I'm going to Italy and, and Spain with him next week. I'm spending 10 days with him to really, you know, do a deeper dive into why people think and behave the way they do and how can we optimize and maximize the brain for performance. And that's something that I'm really into right now. Oh, yeah, fantastic. Uh, Now, a core message in our show is to leave our families, communities, and the world better than we found it by passing down a mindset, values, and principles to future generations, not just money. So if you cannot pass on any money to future generations and we're only allowed to pass on three principles to them to build wealth and achieve happiness and success, what would they be? Well, I love the question, and I really do believe that the three things that I'm about to share are massively powerful. And the very first one is to really understand the natural laws of the universe. I mean, if people think that this whole world is just spinning around aimlessly, you know, I'd ask them to check in again because that there are natural laws that govern things on this beautiful blue planet. Things like the laws of success, the laws of gravity, the laws of compensation, the laws of reciprocity, the laws of circulation. And when you learn and study and apply these laws, There's no question that you can go further faster with what universal intelligence is here to support you with. Do you like that? And does that resonate with you? Yeah, it absolutely does. Very, very powerful. You bet. Number two for me, MC, is really something that I learned by listening to the audio, The Strangest Secret in the World by Earl Nightingale. And I've passed this on to my kids. I pass it on to my, you know, friends, kids. I pass it on to anyone who will listen and that is to practice nonconformity. That is to really understand that we have a unique ability, you know, called our brain and to use that brain. I mean, we're the only creatures on the planet that have the ability to think. And the technical term for it is called dominion over or the power to choose. So I'm here to remind people that when they absolutely focus on what they want and why they want it and don't fall prey to conforming and being like everyone else, You can radically create your own success, invent things, discover things, make money, add value, and live a tremendous life. What do you think of that one? Yeah, absolutely. uh, I've always been, you know, when you look at blueprints and success, it's, it's quite incredible how you know, the majority of folks do one thing that they, they're not really successful, nor in have living to their fullest potential. And there's, there's always a small group of folks that have done, done the complete opposite of what everyone else is doing. Not different, complete opposite. And those are the folks that you're talking about from the nonconformity, um, living and in, living in their, their, living their pur- purpose and also um, exercising their unique abilities. Well, I love that. And it's absolutely true. When you think of a guy like Elon Musk, or you think of a guy like Richard Branson, or (laughs) Steve Jobs, you know, or (laughs) let's, let's add some women here, Oprah Winfrey. I mean, she's amazing. In fact, I did the fire walk with Oprah Winfrey back at Unleash the Power Within. And it was an incredible experience or take somebody like, I don't know, JK Rowling. I mean, this woman was literally living in her car, writing this story about Harry Potter And people told her to stop, put the pen and paper away and go and get a real job. But she knew that if she did that, 
you know, she wouldn't literally unleash what she was here to do on this beautiful planet. And I think we both know that JK Rowling has made over a billion dollars as in one of the richest women in the UK. Yeah. There's so many great examples. Sarah Blakely from Spanx uh, comes to mind too, where she had the exact same thing. I mean, can you imagine when she first went in to go pitch that idea (laughs) (laughs) to companies that they would have just said, no, no, this is, you know, stop wasting your time. Just keep, Get, get a get a different job or something, but she I persisted and look at look at the success that she's having. And that's it. And I remind people that the best way to do that is to drop out of your head and get into your heart and your intuition. Because again, your heart and your intuition are like a super highway that know a million times more than what our old reptilian or mammalian brain knows. And oftentimes, if you get stuck in your head, you're dead. So yeah. drop out of your head, get into your heart, and ask yourself, you know. Who am I? Why am I here? What do I want to create? What is my legacy? What is my why? And when the why is big enough, MC, the how just tends to show up. Would you agree? Absolutely. And it's it's just so powerful to think about your thinking too. And yep. very, very few people in, in, engage in that. Just to stop and pause and reflect and think about how they think and uh, answer all these powerful questions that you mentioned. <laughs> well, it's so true. In fact, I make fun of it all the time. And, you know, I ask people when you read Napoleon Hill's book, Think and Grow Rich, note that he didn't title it Do and Grow Rich. He titled it Think and Grow Rich, because when you think about this, then you can go out there and do it. Does that make sense? Yep, absolutely does. You got it. And then the third thing that I'd say, and I learned this from the man, the myth, the legend, my mentor, Mr. Tony Robbins, and he says that the secret to living is giving, you know, and I really believe it's true. Whether you give your time, whether you give your knowledge, whether you give some money, you know, we're all here for one thing and one thing only, and that is to grow and that is to contribute. And when you find yourself growing and contributing, I mean, life is absolutely amazing. So listeners, check in with yourself and ask yourself if you're growing every single day, That is in your knowledge, your wisdom, your health, your relationships, your finances. Check in and then ask yourself, am I leaving people better off, you know, and helping them get what they want? And I'm telling you, MC, that's the recipe for success. What do you think? Yeah, absolutely. I love that. The secret to living is giving. It's just so, 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 so powerful. Um, I I remember, you know, when I first saw that, um, that when Tony said that, it's just so, so true. Absolutely. And he's embodied that. And I mean, the guy has been incredible, literally working with millions of people in a hundred countries around the planet, literally get out of suffering and get into a place where they realize that their their fulfillment really will come from their growth and their contribution. It's a beautiful thing. Absolutely. Um, Where can my listeners learn more about you, Trevor? Where can they find you? Where can they stay informed of all the projects that you're involved with? And where can they uh, get in touch? Well, thank you very much. And it's really simple. They can head over to my website, which is trevormcgregor.com. That's T-R-E-V-O-R-M-C-G-R-E-G-O-R.com, trevormcgregor.com. There's a little bit about, you know, who I am, what I do as a master platinum coach, and there's some contact information there. So if anyone wants to get in touch, that's probably the best best and fastest way to do it. Fantastic. Well, Trevor, this has been uh, just an absolute blast. I've really enjoyed this. I'm fired up right now. My listeners should be too. <laughs> ready, <laughs> ready, ready to go on with their day, whether they're commuting, whether they're working out, or whether they're just uh, enjoying some leisure time. I really, really appreciate you coming on and sharing your journey and your knowledge and providing so much value for my listeners. This has been really, really great. Well, MC, it's been my joy and my pleasure and a huge shout out for you for the work that you do. It's been great to be on your show and best wishes to success for you and all of your listeners. Thank you. Life settlement investments have allowed financial and banking institutions to not only buy their equity contractually, but also diversify their capital from any economic market and geopolitical risk. It's been part of the billion dollar blueprint followed by institutional investors. And if you're an accredited investor, you can also now participate in this vehicle with enormous growth potential. You can watch an informational webinar presented by one of the premier organizations providing life settlement investments, Penumbra Solutions, 
at cashflowninja.com forward slash life settlements. Thank you again for joining me on the Cashflow Ninja. If you like what you hear and appreciate what we're trying to build here, please subscribe, rate, and write a review for our show on iTunes and share our show with family, friends, and your network. If you're not a subscriber to our newsletter, you can sign up for our newsletter at cashflowninja.com. I want to thank you for spending your most precious resource with me today, your time. Until next time, my friend, live a life of passion and purpose on your terms. This presentation is for educational and informational purposes only. The information being presented and considered does not consider your particular financial objectives or situation, and it does not make personalized recommendations. This material is not intended to replace the advice of a qualified tax and legal advisor or other qualified professionals, and you should not use the information in place of a customized consultation with a licensed professional regarding your specific personal financial objectives, situation and needs. We believe the information provided is reliable, but we do not guarantee its accuracy, timeliness, or completeness.